these gifts usually act together either in twos or threes hardly do you see it's just operating on its own hardly they usually collaborate am i communicating and you know because it's it's in you it's in you <laughs> you you got it you got something right stand again uh -huh, he can't what he got is heavy somebody say heavy hey lord oh, i want to i'm, I'm in between and betwixt <laughs> what that to teach nobody first people always tell me teach them <laughs> so they can know how to do these things i tell you so so we, we are keeping once in a while hey, get up again Take two steps towards me. Two Ah, Kabu. Kabu, 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 Kabu. This is a bay. Get bay. So the guy went and got it and manifested it. <laughs> Saul approached Samuel. And Samuel told him that the donkeys you went out looking for have been found. Those were not the days of phone. If, if, if it was the days of phone, the father would have called him. Amen. So the ability to receive communication was there before phone ever existed. So he told him that the donkey that you went out looking for days ago is found. And so finally, when they now anointed him, the Israelites insisted on having a king. They now went looking for him. Someone now said, let's cast lots. And the lots fell on him. They started looking for the guy. He had hidden himself. And they came and met Samuel. And he inquired of the Lord. So you need to activate what you have by connecting with God. The key to power is divine contact. If you can make contact, if you can connect, all these things come on. It's not just prayer. Prayer is a tool that can help you contact. Praying, that fervent, earnest dimension of prayer that connects your heart with the heart of God makes you contact the power of God. And once the power of God comes, all these gadgets come alive. And the one you know to operate with is the one that will constantly be happening. Am I communicating? Remember, it's not something you do, it's not something you do by your own will. Once it comes, God begins to give you instructions, quickening. If you go beyond the whatever, you know, bring your own ideas, you might not see an immediate, instant, dramatic result. I can use the anointing and release my faith on somebody because I believe God for some things. It will take, we'll see a gradual whatever, but you want an instant manifestation, you have to follow the divine instruction that you pick as the anointing comes on, on your life. Am I communicating? So these are examples of men that Moses could write the, the book, Genesis and Co. How? He could get all those information from God. Things that happened in time past. And he put them on paper. Apostle John, when he had a revelation of Jesus Christ, heard Jesus talking to him about the condition, the state of the church, present. So there's present, there's past. That's what this gift specializes on. Then his brother gift, which is the best when it comes to the revelational gift, is the gift of the word of wisdom. This gift is a supernatural manifestation of the Holy Ghost that gives you access into the plans of God. Plans of God for your life. So usually when you are asking God to give you a vision, to give you his plan for your life, and God opens you to that revelation knowledge, usually is that gift that kicks in. Giving you information about the future. By this gift, men were warned of dangers that were coming ahead. That was how Noah could tell that there was going to be flood. And this same gift gives them solution to whatever has been revealed. So the gift of the word of knowledge reveals to you facts. While the gift of the word of wisdom offers to you solution. How we can solve this problem. 
It can also show you dangers coming ahead and offer you solution how you can escape that danger. Because that's always been the will of God to make his people escape evil. That was the gift that Pharaoh received of seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. He could not interpret it because he was not a believer. So a believer had to come in. To interpret that mystery. But God in his wisdom gave it to Pharaoh. Because that is what will get national attention. Pharaoh will not care about the dream of a slave. It's about his own dream. But when a slave who was a Jew. Now interpreted that dream for him. He cared about the guy. Am I communicating? Oh these gifts can take you places. You will be on demand solving people's um, problems. And you know one thing about this word of knowledge <laughs> and word of wisdom it makes you appear like a god especially to the unbelievers. When you can tell them secrets they themselves alone have never revealed to anybody. They will just kneel down and grab you by your leg. You've you've tackled things. You saw the, what, the revelation that daddy showed us this morning of how Jesus used the gift of the word of knowledge and arrested the woman. These are powerful tools that can attract people into the kingdom of God in mass. Global evangelization is impossible without these tools. So the gift of the word of wisdom future tells gives you solutions to problems and then you have the discerning of spirits that's the third gift in the revelational equation the, the discerning the gift of the design of, of spirits is the ability to see into the world of the spirit you see into the world of the spirit where you can see spirits and there are three categories of spirits this particular gift specializes on you can see god anytime in the bible they said and they saw the similitude of god whether it was moses that said he saw his back part or whether it was the fire that was burning all those supernatural manifestations is the gift of the signing of spirit they saw you will see in the book of Revelation where John will say, and he saw the red dragon. He actually saw. And what, who was that? The devil. When Jesus appeared before John and was talking to him and he could see him, that was that gift in manifestation, the signing of spirits. Whatever Jesus now told him, when he began to tell him about the condition of the church was the gift of the word of knowledge. When he began to tell him about the future, that's the gift of the word of wisdom at work. And he's seeing Jesus. So that's the three gifts combined together. Am I communicating? Very important. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, I'm understanding. It's getting easier now. And before this service comes to an end, I'll begin to flow in these dimensions. It's getting easier now. Then let's just, in the next... Three minutes, just address the gift, the utterance gifts. The first is the gift of prophecy. Now, when we use the word prophecy, it simply means speaking for another. Speaking for another person. So the gift of prophecy is God, your ability to receive a message from God and you are communicating it to men in a known language. There are times people prepare a message to preach. And as they began to preach, the spirit of prophecy came upon them. This gift was activated. They found themselves entering into some things. And they began to wonder, how did I even get there? It happens in peace life most of the time. And he goes back to where he was. And, the, and whatever he addressed met a need. Somebody somehow was pulling it. And you will hear him make statements like this. Somebody is pulling this thing out of me. Oh. I didn't plan to come here and do this. But he will just finish it and then go back. Am I communicating? So that's the gift of prophecy. The gift of 
diverse kinds of tongues is now you getting an information supernaturally from God. Now you are communicating it to his people in an unknown language. That gift requires the gift of interpretation of tongues. So it will take the combination of the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues to do the job of the gift of prophecy. Thereby making the gift of prophecy greater than the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues.